What's up everyone, Sean Count Blagrath here today with an album review, this time of the 2016 Peaceville Records release of The Fall of Hearts by Catatonia. If you're not familiar with Catatonia, they are a progressive, depressive rock slash metal band hailing from Sweden. They have been around since 1991 and they were really one of the founders of the Death Doom style along with bands such as Paradise Lost and My Dying Bride. Um, they could, they had the Death Doom sound for an album and an EP, and I guess you could say her second album is technically Death Doom. Um, Dance of December Souls is an absolute classic within the genre. It's filled with absolutely amazing doom metal anthems, and, um, some of the best songwriting within early Death Doom, and please ignore the moth that's bombarding me. Uh, the Four Funerals to Come EP is an absolutely amazing companion piece to that album. If you haven't heard it, you gotta listen to it. And Brave Murder Day was really the turning point for the band. And uh, they decided to keep the Death Doom style, but they had Michael Ackerfeld from Opeth on vocals, because Jonas lost his ability to growl. And... Um, they mixed the Death Doom with a little bit of the more depressive and gothic elements, uh, especially on the song Day, which is one of my absolute favorites of theirs. Um, in the late 90s, there was a really weird thing that happened with a lot of the Death Doom bands. My Dying Bride did the, the 38-point-whatever percent complete, or whatever that's called, that very strange, bizarre album of theirs. Um, Paradise Lost did one second. And Catatonia, in 1998, released The Discouraged Ones, which was light years away from what they did in the past. Uh, this was a pretty much full-on depressive rock album, and they continued that uh, sort of depressive rock sound on to uh, 1999's Tonight's Decision. While those are very good albums in their own right, they just seemed unrefined. And it wasn't until 2001 when they released The Last Fair Deal Gone Down, that they truly showcased their musicianship and their songwriting abilities. And um, they truly became a more progressive band. And from that point on, they released Viva Emptiness, uh, The Great Cold Distance, Night is the New Day, and Dead End Kings, which are all amazing albums. Then in 2013, they did a uh, acoustic version of Dead End Kings called Dethroned and Uncrowned, which was an absolutely amazing album, in my opinion. I just wish they would have re-recorded the vocals. Um, but that was my only gripe with it. And, of course, last year, the Sanctitude live album, which was all acoustic. While there's still a bit of that progressive and mellow mindset from the Dethroned and Uncrowned sessions, um, this is definitely the next logical step in the evolution of the Catatonia sound. Um... It's a mixed bag of their softer, more beautiful ambience with their driving, heavy riffs that Catatonia are known for, filled with the absolutely incredible musicianship and absolutely amazing, intricate riffs that these guys are known for. And this time around, it's even more refined than Dead End Kings. While it points it's not as catchy, it still has a large, it maintains a large sense of identity. And it still is catchy, just in a different way. Um, the new drummer, Daniel, had very big shoes to fill when their previous drummer named Daniel, they like drummers named Daniel, uh, left the band. And, uh, he filled those shoes with grace and ease. He, this is some of the best drum work Catatonia has done, and that's saying something, because I've always seen Catatonia as having absolutely amazing drum work. And, uh, on this album is absolutely no exception to that rule. Um... Daniel on this really seems to play uh, according to the music, which is what a good drummer should be doing. But at the same time, he doesn't go far beyond what he should. He doesn't really take away from the music, and he's not distracting from it. Um, he does some very, very awesome, awesome kick patterns, great fills. Um, I love his off-time work, especially, I believe it's on the song, Serac. I believe that's the song, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, that song has some fantastic drum work where it's going, alternating between the kick snare and the china. And that part just boggles my mind how he can play that, or the kick patterns within the Night Subscriber. 
amazing drum tone, crystal clear, very well done. It's not clicky. It has enough punch to it. It seems very natural sounding and very warm. And same goes for the bass tone. The bass tone is absolutely incredible, and the bass work is just absolutely top notch. Uh, one of my favorite things about this is, especially on the song um, "Old Hearts," "Old Heart Falls." Um, the bass really carries the song in a way, especially in the lyric of "Sorrow will find you." It's grace. Its voice is given way to mine. Uh, when that line comes in and that bass kind of pops in, it kind of feels like the bass carries the rest of the song from that point. And I really like that about uh, the bass work. You could just listen to this album, pay attention to the bass, and find something new and completely amazing within the context of the album that you probably never caught before. And I just love that. Um, when it comes to a guitar, the guitars range from the heavy, distorted, crunchy, yet crystal clear tone that they're known for and the absolutely beautiful clean tone that is displayed perfectly on the song um, Decima, I believe is how it's called, pronounced. Amazing, amazing guitar tone. Um, it has very... It's just one of those guitar tones where when you hear it, you know it's catatonia. It's that trademark sound that they're known for, and uh, I just think it's an absolutely perfect tone for the diversity of the sounds that they go for. Um, the one thing, too, that I love is, while the riffs are very, very intricate, and the solos definitely are in the lead work, nothing is distracting. Nothing is too over the top. Nothing is too much for the music. It's always just enough to carry the song and not distract you from everything else that's happening. And it's just so damn good. Um, as I said, there's some great riffs with some odd timing and really cool patterns. Um, and once again, Serac is a great example of all of this that I'm talking about. It has a lot of it has the clean guitar, it has the distorted guitar, it has the very cool, intricate, off-time patterns. And it definitely has um, that catatonia sensibility that we know and love. Um, one of my favorite like patterns is On the Night Subscriber. That's probably my favorite song from this, and I'll talk about that a bit more. Um, just an absolutely amazing performance. Now, when it comes to the vocals, Jonas Renske is one of my absolute favorite favorite vocalist in all of metal. His clean singing is just unbelievable to me. And um, what can I say? He nails it. He nailed it again with this record. Um, one of my favorite things about him is he is an amazing lyricist. He's beyond a lyricist. He's a, he's a poet. And he, his, vo his voice matches the delivery. And when I say his voice matches... His excuse me. His voice matches the lyrics, and his delivery um, adds to the emotion of the lyrics. And one of my favorite things about him is how he will accent certain words, like on the great cold distance. Um, I can't. I can't remember. I think it's deliberation in the song where he says, "There's nothing in this the airspace. There's no one in the airspace." The way he said that was absolutely genius in the song, simply because it sounded spacey, and that's what made me fall in love with Catatonia. And on this album, he does that throughout the entire thing. And once again, it's never over the top, and it's never too much. He has some absolutely catchy vocal melodies and harmonizations with some of the best lyrics of all metal. Like on the song Fall of Hearts, with some of the lyrics, especially the opening line of uh, The weighted cloud coming by has me looking right here under the sky is just... That line right there just is one of the best lyrics in all of metal, and this whole album is filled with that. And he just creates some very catchy vocal harmonies that you will find yourself singing along to, like on Last Song Before the Fade, with the chorus to that is just so catchy. Um, one other thing that's great about this album is there's tons of keyboards, and there's even Mellotron at points, uh, that really fills out the empty space on here and gives it that beautiful atmosphere that we know Catatonia for and once again it's absolute perfection and uh, all the songs come together on this record 
so cohesively. Um, it makes the perfect listening experience for both old and new Catatonia fans. And it's an album where you can pick out songs from and still get enjoyment from, while at the same time, it's best if you just listen to the entire thing as one piece of art, which is what it's intended for, because it's an album. But some of my favorite songs from this would definitely, definitely be uh, the opener, Takeover. I, Old Heart Falls, it has to be my favorite song on here, along with the Night Subscriber. Um, Old Heart Falls lyric video was the first thing they released from uh, this album, and it blew me away, and I couldn't stop listening to it. Just go listen to that, and the Night Subscriber, I'll provide links to these in the description. Um... With the Night Subscriber, and the reason why it's my favorite song is it has a soft, beautiful, intricate uh, intro with some beautiful, beautiful keyboard work. And the way the song builds up into the heavy chorus is absolutely genius. And especially the transition into it with um, the building guitar in the background along with the cymbal uh, chokes that happen and with the drum fill goes into it just every time I hear it I get a smile on my face because it's so good um, and the way the whole song progresses is absolutely amazing and really the next song Pale Flag and Passer are perfect closers to the album and the bonus tracks for this album are just a perfect bonus it, it's icing on the cake basically it just adds to the album this is an album that everyone that is a fan of beautiful music needs to have. If you're a fan of good musicianship, you need to have this. Good songwriting, you need to have this. I can't say enough good things about this. I don't want to give it a 10 because I don't feel comfortable enough giving it a 10, but I'm going to give it the highest score I possibly can. I'm giving this a 9.5 out of 10. I strongly encourage you all to pick this up. Give it a listen if you have it. I will have links to... Uh, I will provide links to Old Heart Falls, uh, Last Song Before the Fade, and The Night Subscriber. Uh, check those out, and if those songs click with you, pick this up. I strongly encourage it. There's a, a big art book edition that has uh, CD, DVD, and 5.1 surround sound, and the album on 10-inch vinyl. There's the vinyl, and of course, there's a standard jewel case, and I got the media book which is very cool, two disc set, CD, booklet, and over here is the uh, 5.1 disc, which I actually have in, and I, if you have home theater system, you need to hear this in 5.1, it's absolutely incredible, but once again, 9.5 out of 10, check this album out and support Catatone and Peaceville Records, this is an amazing album, definitely worth your time and money, and that's my review. Thank you guys for watching, thank you for subscribing, and as always, keep it metal.